What's up YouTube? I hope each and every one of you guys are healthy and enjoying life today. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the 2023 Subaru Forester Wilderness. Huge thank you to Chris Kronzer over at Safford Brown Subaru of Manassas, Virginia for allowing me to do this video for you guys today. If you are interested in this particular Forester Wilderness or any Subaru product, I'll be sure to have Chris's information on screen as well as in the description box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video. Man, the weather outside right now is literally perfect. I couldn't ask for much better weather. In the past couple days have been just absolutely beautiful here in Virginia. But just like I always do, first we're gonna talk about the exterior and the performance. So like I said, this is a 2023 Subaru Forester Wilderness. And this particular one has been painted in one of the coolest colors in my opinion that you can get on the Forester Wilderness, geyser blue. But basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the headlights, then I'm gonna work our way down and around into the back end of the Forester Wilderness. So starting with the headlights as standard with the Wilderness, you get LED steering responsive headlights with high beam assist, as well as LED daytime running lights, standard turn signals, and LED hexagonal fog lights integrated nicely into your front bumper. But now taking a step back and to the left, you can see at the center of your hood, you get that satin black hood graphic. And if you do not like the hood graphic, you can take it off. However, that hood graphic does come with the wilderness trim level. But again, it's basically like a vinyl hood graphic. So if you took a heat gun and spent some time, you could take that off if that is what you wanted to do. But again, that does come standard with the wilderness and then coming down just a little bit you get a satin black front grille with your Subaru logo located at the center of it and then just beneath your Subaru logo is where you will find your front 180 degree view camera that comes with the wilderness so if you actually do any sort of off-roading there's a camera button that you can press on the interior and it will give you a forward view of what you got going on in front of you in case you cannot see that big rock that's in front of you if you were doing any sort of off-roading so again that front camera does come standard with the wilderness and then you also do get a satin black front bumper with an integrated tow hook point on the passenger side of the front bumper which is right here so i will show you the tow hook when we get into it but basically it is where you will find your spare tire all you got to do to put the tow hook in there is pop this trim piece off and then you can screw that tow hook right in there and then taking a step back all the way at the bottom of your front bumper you basically have a silver front chin which is what this piece is right here and that silver front chin piece leads nicely into your skid plate uh, front skid plate that does come standard with the wilderness and you can see down here that is your front skid plate and it is actually made out of metal rather than the plastic but uh, yeah that's kind of about it for what we got going on up here and then also uh, you do get 9.2 inches of ground clearance with the wilderness as compared to I believe it's 8.7 with all the other Forester models but anyways you can see again you have that satin black front bumper that satin black front bumper leads nicely into your satin black wheel arch moldings now this satin black uh, wheel arch molding is basically like a hexagonal pattern uh, textured plastic and the reason they give you all this satin black plastic is so instead of you know scratching up your paint on the off-road with you know brushes shrubs and stuff like that you're just messing up or not even messing up but you are going to be having that brush hit the satin black plastic rather than this beautiful blue paint but anyways coming down just a little bit like I said with the wilderness trim level you do get a raised suspension that gives you a little bit more ground clearance than the other Forester models but it's also an off-road tuned suspension as well I'll show you what the suspension looks like up in there that's a closer look at that and then taking a step back let's see what the wheels that we get with the Forester look like so these are the uh, wilderness wheels and they are a 17 inch matte black wheel wrapped in 225 60 yokohama geolander all-terrain tires i do like the sidewall of these tires because they give it a rather you know rugged appearance and then you can also see the tread pattern on that tire there real quick i actually do think you could do a little bit of you know not serious off-roading, but you know, more serious off-roading than what a lot of people would do with this vehicle. Uh, I think these tires would do very well in a little bit of mud. And then one other thing, this vehicle has been optioned with the $185 splash guards, which is what this is right here. And those can be find, found behind all four of your wheels and tires. And then coming up just a little bit, again, as standard with the Forester Wilderness, you get a windshield wiper deicer, 
And then coming over to here, you get satin black mirror caps with integrated turn signals. And as standard, these side view mirrors are heated manual folding and you get your blind spot monitoring on the inside of your side view mirror here. And then also about right there on the inside of your side view mirror on the passenger side as well. Now, one feature that this one does not have that you could potentially get if you wanted to, um, there is the optional $278 auto dimming mirrors with the approach light. So basically, let's say you have a car behind you that's riding you with their high beams and their high beams are shining into your mirrors. Basically, both of these side view mirrors with that $278 option would auto dim, uh, but auto dim, excuse me. But again, these, this one is not optioned with that option, but I thought I might point it out for those interested in specking out a Forester Wilderness. Now, taking a step back, here's a side profile shot of the Forester. And then at the top with the wilderness, you get black raised ladder type roof reels with an 800 pound static load capacity. So if you wanted to do, you know, a little bit of off-roading, but you also wanted to know camp in the middle of nowhere, you could put a rooftop tent up top here, as long as the tent, the uh, cargo and you all weigh less than 800 pounds. Again, when stationary, when moving, uh, that capacity does go down. I just don't know the exact figure of it, uh, but I do know, again, that static load capacity is 800 pounds. And then you also get that anodized copper accent color trim piece uh, right here, here, and there as well. And you can see that accents this Forester lettering down here nicely as well. But we'll get to that in a second because you do get satin black window trim as well as body color door handles with keyless access just keep in mind the keyless access function is only on your front two doors the rear two doors do not get that keyless access function and then also on your front two doors only you get that subaru wilderness badging i'll give you a closer view of what that looks like right there so basically you get three of those badges one here one on the other door in the front and then also one on your lift gate as well and then finishing things off here you get the satin black door cladding with the copper forester leather on your rear two doors only and then coming down the side again you get those satin black wheel arch moldings body color shark fin antenna body color roof spoiler back here and then you get some black trim that surrounds your rear glass obviously you do get a rear window defogger you get a single speed rear wiper right here you get some satin black trim subaru logo located at the center of that satin black trim and then beneath your subaru logo is where you will find your backup camera this particular vehicle though has been optioned with the 1850 dollars option package 22 which gives you the power lift gate as well as the harman kardon sound system so so with the power lift gate, all you gotta do is have your key fob in your pocket, put your hand underneath the Subaru logo, pull up, the lift gate will open up. That's the speed in which the lift gate opens up. And again, with that option package 22, you do get the Harman Kardon sound system. So you get the Harman Kardon speaker back here. Um, and there were a couple other options that you have back here that this vehicle does have. And that includes the $105 cargo sidewall protector, which basically is a floor mat for the sidewall here and here as well. And then the other option that we have back here is the $161 rear seat back protector, which is basically a floor mat on the back of your seat. That's the kind of best way that I can describe it. So if you have a wet dog um, and you know your dog gets wet after jumping in the pond, instead of you know rubbing up uh, against the seat back and getting that all moldy, um, you don't have to worry about that because it's gonna be rubbing or your dog's gonna be rubbing up against that basically rubber floor mat on the back of the seat. So that's a very nice option. And then you have your cargo cover right here. You have a 12 volt power outlet and then you get four grocery bag holders back here. One, two, and then you get another two on this side as well. You can also drop your second row seats. Literally all you gotta do is apply very little pressure and then boom, your second row seats will drop. You have that little thing on both sides. Um, and then one other thing, uh, I think this cargo tray does come standard. And then underneath this, I wanted to show you that if you pull up on this as well you get a full size spare tire down there and then that is where you'll find your jack your tow hook that i was mentioning uh, and everything that you need to change a flat tire if you know god forbid you do end up getting a flat tire and then considering uh the size of the vehicle i would say that there is a considerable amount of storage space back here if you need a little bit more uh, vertical storage space you could take this cargo cover uh, out and then you'd have again a little bit more vertical storage space other than that that's kind of about it for what we got going on in the trunk area coming over here you get these two buttons the one on the left is going to lock the vehicle and then the one on the right is going to drop your power lift gate one thing i did fail to mention is that you also get a led spotlight back here as well 
anyways if you click that button the lift gate will begin to drop again and then a couple things i wanted to go over on the lift gate is basically you get satin black badging here on this side as well and then that's your third subaru wilderness badging on the lower right hand side of your lift gate and then coming down a little bit, finishing things off here at the rear end, you get the satin black valence with four integrated parking sensors as well as the single exit exhaust tip. And uh, a couple other things is that with the Wilderness, you get a 411 axle ratio, whereas compared to like the Forester Sport and all the other Forester models, you get a 370 axle ratio. And the max tow capacity of the Forester Wilderness is 3,000 pounds as compared to all the other Foresters with their 1,500 pound max tow capacity. So not only is this more capable, you know, off-road, it's also more capable when towing. And it's also a little bit quicker with that axle ratio but let me know what you think of this color i'm very curious to see who likes this color who doesn't like this color again like i mentioned i am definitely a big fan of the blue uh, on the forester wilderness i think it's just very very cool color again my personal opinion let me know what you think in the comments below but with that stuff out of the way let's move into performance Popping open that hood reveals that 2.5 liter naturally aspirated boxer four cylinder that makes 182 horsepower and 176 pound feet of torque. It is made to a linear tronic continuously variable transmission for a zero to 60 time in eight seconds. If you were wondering about fuel economy, you can achieve 25 miles per gallon in the city, 28 miles per gallon on the highway for 26 miles per gallon combined with all wheel drive. It's kind of interesting to see how close those fuel economy figures are, the city and the highway. And I think the reason that that is, is because of that 411 axle ratio. So it does very well in the city, but because of that axle ratio, it does, you know, bring those highway numbers down just a little bit as compared to like the Forester Sport, for example. Um, however, again, with that axle ratio, it actually is a little bit quicker you know from stoplight to stoplight and around town and stuff like that but if you're enjoying the video so far today please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up please hit that subscribe button i'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and i cannot get there without your support you know i put a lot of time and effort into making these videos so i would really appreciate it if you guys would give it a thumbs up let me know what you think of the forester wilderness in the comments down below and hit that subscribe button the likes and comments look really good for my channel in the youtube algorithm so if you guys would just take a second leave a comment maybe give it a thumbs up uh, and with that stuff said let's move into the interior Moving on into the interior, like I mentioned a little bit ago in the video, you do get keyless access. So all you got to do is have your key fob in your pocket, walk up to the vehicle, put your hand behind the door handle and the vehicle will unlock. You can also lock the vehicle by running your finger across these two lines right here. And now the vehicle is locked. Again, the keyless access function is only on your front two doors. And last but not least, I did want to walk you through a couple of the functions on the key fob. Starting from the top, you have your lock function. The Subaru logo is your unlock function. Then this is your power lift gate function and then all the way at the bottom you have your panic function but let's see what the interior has to offer so we're going to start with the driver side door panel and when you guys get the forester wilderness you do get the startex water repellent upholstery this one happens to be the gray startex water repellent upholstery which i believe is the only color you can get with the wilderness so all of this area right here is that StarTex upholstery. You get a nicely padded armrest. You get this Subaru Wilderness thing right here. You get a satin black door handle. Here are your side view mirror controls. You have your unlock and your lock functions. You get automatic up and down windows in the front. The rear windows are not automatic up or down. And then pressing on this button right here is going to restrict your passenger window privileges. One thing I really like about Subarus is that they always have a great spot that you can set your phone on the door panel. So iPhone 14 Pro Max fits in there, very, very nice. Uh, spot you could set a, a water bottle right here and then you get a little bit of miscellaneous storage space behind that. Again, like I mentioned a little bit ago in the video, this vehicle has been optioned with the $1,850 $1, option package 22. And with that package, you get the Harman Kardon sound system. So that is what your Harman Kardon speaker surround looks like right there. Now, taking a look at your driver's seat, you do get a power adjustable front driver's seat and you also get adjustable headrests as well. So they move forwards and backwards, which is very nice. And then the seats themselves are also very comfortable. Oh, and by the way, you do get heated front seats with two levels of adjustability and you also get power lumbar. But Taking a step into the interior, this is what the interior looks like from the driver's perspective. You do get keyless access, so that also means you get push button start. To start the vehicle, you push your foot down on that brake pedal down there and then push to start. Take a listen. 
that is what the vehicle sounds like when it fires up. One thing I really like is take a look at these pedals. They're more like sport pedals um, with the like faux aluminum with the rubber grips. I think they look very, very sweet. But basically, I'm going to start with these controls, then I'm going to walk you throughout to the interior. So coming over to here, pressing on that button right there is going to open and or close your power lift gate. This is to turn your steering responsive headlights on or off. So if you don't want the headlights to move when you move the steering wheel, you can turn that off by the push of that button. Then right here, you can basically set the height of which you want the power lift gate to open up with that button. Then this scroll knob is to brighten and or dim your gauge cluster as well as your backlit buttons. This is to turn your blind spot system on or off. That's to turn your auto stop start system on or off. And then that is to turn traction control on or off. Coming over to here, when you flip this down, you get uh, access into your manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. So basically, you can bring the steering wheel towards you, you can push it away from you, and then you can move it up and down to your liking as well. But before we continue on, I wanna show you what the turn signal sounds like. So let's take a listen to that. That is what your turn signal sounds like. Not only is this your turn signal control stock, your high beam control stock, this is also your headlight and your fog light control stock. So coming over to here, flipping that all the way down is headlights off. That's headlights in the automatic position, parking lights on, and then all the way up is headlights in the always on position. And then that is fog lights on or off. However, right now we got daylight out right now. And when I have my headlights in the automatic position, even if I try to flip my headlight or my fog lights into the on position, they're not gonna turn on until the automatic headlights turn on. However, if I wanted the fog lights to be on while it's sun, you know, out like right it is right now, uh, I would have to have the headlights in the always on position and then that turns the fog lights on. But anyways, zooming back out, you get a leather wrap steering wheel. Um, and then also with the wilderness, you get a eight speed manual shift mode. So you essentially get these steering wheel mounted paddle shifters, downshift on the left, upshift on the right, got your horn at the center. Let's take a listen. That is what the horn sounds like on the Forester Wilderness. Now, Coming over to here, you have these controls. So basically, this is to go back on a track. This is to go forward on a track. This is your volume control. And then uh, this is to switch between your different sources like AM, FM, XM, and so on and so forth. Then you have this info button right here. When you click that info button, it's gonna bring you in between your different pages on the info screen up top here. I'll show you that here in a minute. I'm not gonna get into that quite yet. This is to pick up on a phone call and or speak to the vehicle. This is to hang up on a phone call. These controls down here are to control your productivity screen located at the center of your gauge cluster. And then on the right hand side of the steering wheel, as standard, you get adaptive cruise control. So here are your adaptive cruise control slash your driving assistance features. And then just beneath that with the wilderness, you get SI drive. So basically you have your sport and your intelligent drive modes. Intelligent is basically like your normal mode. Sport mode obviously is sport mode. Um, and then yeah. Now I guess I want to move into the gauge cluster. So this is what your gauge cluster looks like with the wilderness. You get that copper accenting around your tachometer and your speedometer makes this a little bit uh, special as compared to the other trim levels. And then you also get the Subaru wilderness badging um, inside of your tachometer as well. So that's what that looks like there. Um, and then again, to control this productivity screen, you have these controls down here. I'm gonna get into that in a second, but basically at the top, you have your instant fuel economy stuff. Right now, the center screen is for your tire pressure monitoring system. Basically, you have to be moving in order for it to read the tire pressure stuff. Um, and then that is your auto stop start status. That's letting us, us know that we're in park. That's letting us know that we are in intelligent mode. And then right now, this is the trip B stuff. That's your odometer. And then you get your fuel gauge all the way at the bottom. You see where it says 23.3. If you wanted to reset that, you have this trip reset button over here. If you press and hold, those numbers will reset back down to zero, as you can see right now. And then again, to control that screen, you have these buttons down here. So I'll click this button and I'm just gonna walk you throughout the screen. So right now, tire pressure stuff. Now, if you press and hold on this I set button, it's gonna bring you into a different menu. So you can, uh, in that different menu, you can go in between your screen settings, your warning volume, seat reminder, your eyesight settings, your reverse automatic braking stuff, your vehicle settings, default settings, and you can go back. I do wanna show you the eyesight stuff. So if you click into that, you have the lead vehicle stuff, uh, cruise control, lane centering, all these different things. Uh, but back out of that, I'm gonna go back to where it says go back. This is basically like your select button. So when I select that, that's gonna bring me back into the regular menu. So just clicking down again, you can go in between your different, um, you know, average trip stuff up top there, which I reset. That's why it's not reading anything. And then that is your fuel range. Clicking down one more time, that's like your trip A. And then this is more analytical data digital speedometer readout 
this is a pretty cool thing. So basically when the auto stop start system turns the vehicle off, it counts how long the vehicle has been off for and how long or how much fuel the vehicle has saved with the auto stop start system turning the vehicle off uh, and then tire pressure stuff. Basically, I would leave it on the digital speedometer readout because you know that's just my personal preference. But anyways, up on the dash, you get some of that copper accent colored stitching. You also get four HVAC vents on the dash as well. But moving up to here again to control this screen, you have this info button on the left-hand side of your steering wheel. So I'm gonna click throughout that screen, but basically right now you get your time, you get your temperature, and now I'm clicking on the info button. So basically you got your eyesight stuff, your driver assistant stuff is what that is. Coming down one more, um, basically you got your tilting and stuff, uh, and then you get your uh, pressures, temperatures, Coming down, you get your weather, that's your compass. And then you have your audio stuff, some fuel stuff, time and the date. And then all the way back down, basically you can go into that info button. Basically, if it was me, ooh, I don't know which screen I would leave it on. I'd probably leave it on, not the weather, not that, probably that. Uh, and then coming down just a little bit, Again, this vehicle has been optioned with the $1,850 option package 22. And basically with that, you get the eight inch Starlink infotainment system with built-in navigation. Uh, however, if you just had the Forester Wilderness without option package 22, you'd still get the eight inch infotainment system just without the built-in navigation. And then all Forester Wilderness models get wired Apple CarPlay and wired Android Auto connectivity. Um, so you do not get the wireless CarPlay or the wireless Android Auto. But anyways, this is what your home screen looks like on the infotainment system you have your home button up top here on the screen itself and then you also get a home physical home button down here um, then these are all the different things you can go throughout on this screen this is the second screen this is the third screen click back on the home button brings you back into the home screen this is what you pay that money for is basically that built-in navigation personally for me i just always connect my phone and use ways but i'd still probably get option package 22 because of the power lift gate and the harman kardon sound system um, yeah, coming down, you get a CD uh, exchanger right here, which is interesting. You don't really see very many of those on vehicles left nowadays. Then you have your volume control knob, your tuning control knob, physical home button, physical radio button, physical map button, which will bring you up your map. Then you have your apps button, brings you into your apps. Um, and then you have your back button, your forward button. So basically these are to go forward or backward on a track. And then this is gonna bring you into your media screen. Uh, and then that's kind of about it for that kind of stuff. Push button start again. This is your windshield wiper control stock for your front windshield wipers and your rear wiper. Then you got your hazard button. You get dual zone climate control, temperature control, temperature control, fan speed control. Um, and then you got all those different things there. Coming down a little bit more, you get a 12 volt power outlet, two USB A ports and a auxiliary jack. You can also set some miscellaneous items down here as well. On your gear shifter, you get some more of that copper accent colored trim that accents the copper accent colored trim and stitching on your steering wheel nicely. Um, again, you get the eight speed manual shift mode. So if you wanted to use the steering wheel mounted paddle shifters, you gotta put this thing into drive and then flip that over to the left. And now you can control the transmission with the steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. That's about it for that. That. This is your electronic parking brake. This is auto vehicle hold. So basically if you're stuck in traffic, you're tired of holding your foot down on your brake by yourself because you're in standstill traffic. When you activate that button and that button is active, basically the vehicle will hold you in place by itself with its braking system. And all you got to do to you know go forward again is hit the accelerator. Um, or if you're stuck in traffic and you're ready to you know hold your foot down on your brake, by yourself again you just push your foot on the brake and then push that again and that's going to disengage the auto vehicle hold and then over here you get dual x modes with the forester wilderness but basically uh, you get dual x mode with low speed and low ratio gradient control so if you flip over to the left that's going to put you into your snow mode and then it also pops up that screen as well uh, and then clicking over to the right that brings you into your deep snow slash mud mode, which is what that looks like up top there as well. And then if you wanted to go back into normal mode, all you gotta do is push down on that button and then it puts you back into your normal mode, which is intelligent mode. Um, again, you get the forward facing camera or the front 180 degree view camera as Subaru likes to call it by the push of that button that will pop up your camera up top there and then behind that like I mentioned you get uh, heated front seats with two levels of adjustability both high and low and then if you have it at the middle that's basically off 
Then you get two cup holders here, a little bit of miscellaneous storage space, a nicely padded armrest, opening up your armrest. If you take this piece out, you get a 12 volt power outlet down in there. And then I would say you got about a maybe eight inches or 12 inches uh, of depth down in there for whatever you want to set down in there. Closing that back up. You get a lockable lower glove box over here with a little bit of storage space. Right now, that's your owner's manual. Um, and you can see you get a little bit of space over there and a little bit of space on top that you can set uh, whatever miscellaneous items you want to, you know, like napkins, straws, you know, the necessities. Um, and then coming up here, this particular vehicle has been optioned with the $403 auto dimming rear view mirror with compass and home lake. Home lake, universal garage door opener. If you own a house with three different garage bays, you can open up those garage bays individually with those three different boxes. Buttons. This button is to turn your auto dimming mirror on or off and then that is your compass up top there That is what the mirror looks like and then coming up This lets you know who is buckled and who is not buckled and then that lets you know if your passenger airbag is on or off This is to turn your lane keeping stuff on or off and then that is your forward collision braking on or off as standard with the Forrester Wilderness, you get a panoramic roof. So that's what your roof looks like. It does slide, but it also does tilt as well. So that's what it looks like when it slides back. I guess it does not tilt, actually. I take that back because I do not see a tilting function, but it does slide. So again, no tilting function, but it does slide. Um, one thing that I do think is pretty cool is that if you slide it all the way backwards, it does actually grab onto that. And then when you close it back up, it will take the shade with it. Just give it a second. You just gotta kind of pop it. Now it's locked in. And then when you close it, you can see it brings the shade with it. Very, very nice. And then up top here, you have your SOS button. All these buttons are basically like your, you know, roadside assistance stuff. And then driver gets a light, passenger gets a light. Both are LED. Up top here, you have your sunglass holder. And then this is basically whether you want the lights to turn on or not when you open up the doors. Coming over to here, you got a, spot, uh, got a spot you could set any paper product. Opening this up, you get a vanity mirror with a vanity light. And then the visor, excuse me, the visor itself does not slide. However, you do get this sliding piece that slides out. Um, and then behind here, you have your eyesight cameras for your driving assistance stuff. You get an OPU panel on the passenger side. You get an Opu panel over here on the driver's side as well. But really that's kind of about it for what we got going on here in these front seats. Um, a couple things I wanted to go over, again, the $1,850 option package 22, which gives you the Harman Kardon sound system, the Starlink infotainment system with built-in navigation and the power lift gate. Um, the only other real option that we have in here that is notable uh, include the $403 auto dimming rear view mirror with the compass and home link. Now, a couple things you get as standard with the Forrester Wilderness includes the SI drive, which is the sport and intelligent drive modes, the dual X mode, the adaptive cruise control, the blind spot monitoring, the panoramic roof, the heated front seats, the front camera, and obviously a few other things that I'm not mentioning. Those are just a couple things I wanted to highlight. Now I'm going to throw the entire window sticker on screen. You can take a look at whatever you want to, uh, but basically I'm just going to highlight the MSRP. So the MSRP of the way that this particular 2023 Forrester Wilderness is spec is $38,200. $149. Um, but before we go onto the drive, I do want to show you what we got going on in the rear seats. So let's see what we got going on back here. So again, door panel looks very similar. You can set a phone in here. Let's see how far the window goes back down here. That's as far as it goes. Spot, you can set a water bottle and some miscellaneous storage space. Right now, the second row seat is folded. Um, now this is what your seats look like. You do get a center fold down armrest with two cup holders. And then I am adjusted behind myself. I am five foot nine and you can see I just have a ton of leg and knee room. Here's another view of my leg and knee room. You get a few seat back pockets, three on this side, one, two, three, three on that side as well. Two HVAC vents, two USB A ports down in here as well. That's what they look like there. And then you get an Opu handle, another Opu panel on that side. You get your dome light right here. Um, and really, that's kind of about it. Um, these seats are very, very comfortable. Uh, I gotta say, I could do a road trip in here and I'm honestly kind of surprised at the amount of room that I have. I forgot the amount of room that you get with the Forester. Um, again, I am adjusted by myself, five foot nine, plenty of headroom, plenty of legroom and knee room. But you know, we've talked about the exterior, we've talked about the performance, and now we've talked about what's going on here in the interior of the Forester Wilderness. So. I wanna see what this thing's like to drive as I'm assuming you guys do as well. So I will see you guys in the driver's seat. All right, now onto the driving portion. Take a listen.
This thing actually accelerates pretty well and definitely better acceleration with the Wilderness as compared to the Sport and other Forester trim levels because of that 411 axle ratio makes it just a little bit quicker from stop, spotlight to stoplight uh, and around town and stuff like that. So that is one reason you might want to consider looking into getting a Forester Wilderness if you thought the other Forester trim levels were a little bit slow. This one definitely, you know, wakes up a little bit with that 411 axle ratio. But um, I've driven a few Foresters at this point and I I think this one is a good one to get reason being uh, is again that 411 axle ratio makes it a little bit you know quicker around town it wakes it up a little bit um, and then I also just kind of like the appearance of the wilderness it's just a little bit more fun looking uh, and I definitely like geyser blue I think it it's just it looks a blue is one of my favorite colors and uh, I definitely like the blue on the wilderness it just makes it look fun um, but Again, acceleration is good. The Harman Kardon sound system is definitely better than the standard sound system that you get uh, on the Forester Wilderness, just the standard one without option package 22. Um, I think the Subaru sound systems um, that are the standard sound systems and not the Harman Kardon sound system don't sound all that great. Um, so that might be a big reason for somebody to upgrade to the Wilderness with the option package 22. Um, not only you get the Harman Kardon sound system, I don't really care about the built-in navigation that you get with that package but I also do like the power lift gate um, so those are two options that you know would sway me into getting option package 22 I'm not saying you have to get option package 22 but that's kind of again what would sway me into getting the option package 22 um, and now let's see a nice little acceleration here You know just regular accelerations like what you all would do you know daily driving one of these after all these are going to be used as daily drivers i would assume uh, and then also if you are going to be doing any sort of off-roading the wilderness trim level is the one to get now the other day i was driving home and i saw a absolutely tricked out forester lifted big tires uh, i wish i caught a picture of it but i mean it was like really tricked out like probably had like 33 inch tires on it maybe 35s um you know they cut out the wheel wells and this was like a new forester like a new body 2022 and up forester uh, and it looked bad to the bone like it really did look pretty sweet um i don't remember if it was a wilderness trim or not um uh, but i i, I i'm kind of leaning towards that it was um, so you can make these things look even cooler than they do, um, you know, from factory if you, you know, want to spend a little bit of time and money on them if you're actually going to be doing any sort of off-roading. But the all-wheel drive systems that, you know, you get with Subarus are really, really good. Also, I really like the EyeSight suite of features that you get. Uh, because you know for the price of this vehicle and you can also get like an Impreza with the same features that you get with this um, With adaptive cruise control the blind spot monitor actually well you don't get blind spot monitoring as standard uh, on the Impreza but you do on this um, and it also has lead vehicle alert so basically when the vehicle in front of you moves at a stoplight and you stay in position let's say you're on your phone distracted it's basically going to pop up something on the screen that says vehicle ahead has moved and it's going to give you an auditory beep uh, letting you know that the vehicle ahead of you has moved i think that is really really cool and that is one of my favorite features on the subaru eyesight of features i know it's kind of silly um but I, I just, you know, it's one of the features that I like. But overall, the seat comfort uh, is very, very good. It's very comfortable, very nicely padded. Um, and I could see, you know, a person who's definitely heavier than me would still be comfortable in these seats. The ride is comfortable. However, you know, I do wish there was a little bit more insulation from the outside world with the Forester models. Um, it's just, it is not like super loud, um, but it is just a little bit louder than some other vehicles at the price point. So that's, uh, I guess, one con to this vehicle that I figured I might point out. I do wish there was a little bit more sound deadening, but I do want to show you the lead vehicle alert system. So I'm going to stop here and I'm going to let that vehicle ahead of me go. Okay, I guess it's not going to do it because I wasn't fully stopped, but that is one feature that I like. Sorry, I can't catch it on camera, but 
overall very nice vehicle i like the way that it drives the only thing is i wish it had a little bit more sound deadening and then i also do wish that it had the wireless apple carplay and wireless android auto i am going to assume that that is going to come uh, in the near future but that's it for today's video if you guys did enjoy the video please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up please hit that subscribe button like i said i'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and i cannot get to my goal without your support so if you did enjoy this video please again give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button i would really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart you guys are the reason uh, that my dreams may or may not come true so please if you would give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button but again that's it for today's video i will catch you all in the next one peace